Welcome to part two of our three-part introduction to Primet Chroma Key. In this segment, I'm going to extract the green from around our model, and I'm going to explore some tools that we didn't look at in the first segment, the tools that correct color spill. The first thing that I'm going to do, however, is go to my Layers palette and select the correct layer. I had the blue background layer selected, and if I turn off my green screen layer, you'll see that this is the image that I want to have showing through the transparency that Primat will create. Instead, I want to have my green screen layer selected so that Primat can work on the image. The second thing I'm going to do before I apply Primat is duplicate my green screen layer and turn off one of the duplicates. This is a strategy that I often take when I'm working with a chroma key photograph because it allows me to have a pristine version of the original photograph and that can be useful in many situations. Let's now go to the filter menu and go to the digital anarchy folder and apply Primat. So here we are in Primat, and as with the image before, Primat is automatically recognizing the last mask that it created. So I'm going to hit my reset key. Now we're looking at our original photograph. And I'm going to go through the three steps or tools that we used earlier to create our mask. With the select key selected, I'm going to click and drag to recognize green as the color that I want to extract. If I now go to my mask view, you'll see that I have an image that looks like a negative. Now I'll click on my clean BG or clean background tool, and I'm going to just click and drag to make sure that Primet fully recognizes all of the green as the area to extract. Notice that when I drag, I do not drag over the edges of my model. This is because I want to very distinctly show Primat what is the background and what is the foreground that it's going to retain. Also, if you look at our original photograph, and I can do that by clicking on the front view button, you'll notice that this model has some flyaway hair. I don't want to click and drag over that hair accidentally and confuse Primat. If I zoom in, you can more easily see that flyaway hair. Now I'm going to click on my clean foreground tool and I'm also going to reset my zoom so I can more fully see my image. I'll go back to mask view and with the clean FG tool I'm going to click and drag inside my model and clean up all the areas that are accidentally left over as gray. Gray indicates a semi-transparent value and we certainly don't want any part of our model to be semi-transparent. What I do want to point out, however, and I'm going to zoom in again for this and pan down. What I do want to point out is that there are a few areas at the top of the model's head that should retain a partially gray tone. If I click again on my front button, you'll see that there is a small area that is a, basically a gap between one portion of the model's hair and another portion of the model's hair. So we don't want to click and drag with our clean FG tool over that area because that area stays transparent. To fully show you what I mean, if I click on my Comp View button, we're now previewing our model against the background layer. If we, with our Clean FG tool, click and drag to tell this small area to be opaque, notice what happens to the edge of our model. The color spill, or that green fringe, is intensified. 
And that's because we have told Primat to include an area of our photograph that is actually part of the background. I can undo that. And if I click my redo and my undo button, you can see that the mass that we've created shrinks and enlarges accordingly. We want it to stay shrunken, that is, we want the areas at the top of her head to stay transparent. I'm going to go back to my comp or composite view, grab my pan tool and pull this image back up a little bit. So now let's get rid of color spill. Color spill is the reflection of the background screen, in this case a green screen, that bounces off of your model due to the lighting in your photography session. Color spill is a topic unto itself, and I'm not going to get into the particulars of lighting your model in this tutorial. However, I will point out that this is not a particularly good photograph. If we go to our front view, so we can see our original photograph, you'll see that there is not a very good distinction between the edge of this model's hair and the background. That means that this photograph is going to have a bit of a problem with color spill, and that's what we're addressing right now. So let's go back to our composite view and take a look at all of the tools that exist to deal with color spill. We have five tools towards the top and six tools towards the bottom of our toolbar. All of these tools deal with color spill a bit differently. The tool that I often like to start with is the spill sponge. And the spill sponge looks at a pretty wide range of tonal value and extracts that tonal value from the entire image that you're working with. What I mean by this is if I click and drag along the green fringe on our model and then perhaps do it once or twice again, what you should notice is that not only does that green fringe disappear from the area that I was dragging around, but it also disappears from the rest of the model's hair. This is because Primat does not look at a particular section of your image. It looks at the overall tonal range of your image. By comparison, if you're used to working in Photoshop with, say, the lasso tool and lassoing a section of your image and then working specifically within that section, that is not what you're going to be doing in Primat. So you need to conceptually make the jump that when you click over here, you are actually working on the entire image. And if I undo a few steps and then redo a few steps, you can see what the spill sponge has done. Now the spill sponge, because it looks at a fairly wide threshold of tonal values, the spill sponge can often overcompensate for spill. If I continue to click and drag on that green area, and I only did that one additional time, you'll see that Primat has now kind of blown out the detail of our image. I'm going to hit the undo button because we certainly don't want to overcompensate for color spill. Since, however, we do still have a bit of a color spill issue, I can see a slight green tinge to the left side of the model's face and a little bit of green going through a portion of her hair, I'm just going to grab a different color spill tool. In this case, I'm going to work with the Spill Minus tool. The Spill Minus tool and its opposite, the Spill Plus tool, either remove spill, that's what the Spill Minus tool does, or add back spill, that's what the Spill Plus tool does. This is nice because when you work with the Spill Minus tool, 
you're working with a much smaller threshold than the spill sponge, so you're extracting and correcting a smaller tonal range. But if by accident you overcorrect, and I'll click maybe one more time and show you that I've definitely overcorrected, and if we zoom in here, my edges are looking a little bit pixelated. Well, then I can go to the Spill Plus tool, and I can basically undo what I just did. So I'm adding back in a little bit of the green, and again, that's happening all around our image, not just in the area that I'm clicking. So I'm going to hit my Zoom Reset button. That is different than my regular Reset button. The Zoom Reset button simply zooms back out to our full view. If we go back to our front view, you can see that we do have some flyaway hair that has not been retained by our mask. Primat is really good at retaining some of the flyaway hair in your model. It's probably not going to retain every last strand, and the amount that it retains is proportionate to how good your lighting situation was. As I said earlier, this is not a particularly well-lit photograph, and therefore the edges of the model's hair are a bit muddy. So with this image, we're not going to be able to retain as much hair as I'd like. However, I can retain some of it, and I'm going to do that by clicking on my Restore Detail tool, and looking back in my comp view, maybe I'll zoom back in a little bit, pan down, and I'm just going to scribble around the area that I know contains some flyaway hair. And as you can see, that hair is coming back a bit. If I hit my undo key a few times, it's pretty subtle, but we have brought back some of the hair. And if you want to see that a little more closely, you can go to your options area and tell Primate to composite against color. Maybe we'll change this color to perhaps a green so we can see a little more clearly. And I'll drag the Restore Detail tool around the edge of her hair again. Hit my Zoom Reset, and if I toggle back and forth between my front or original view and my comp or composite view, it looks like we have created a pretty good mask. What I want to do is simply fine-tune the bit of color spill or color tinge that I still see on this model. And to do that, I'm going to composite against our background layer. I'd like to see the model against the background that she's going to be composited against. I'll zoom in. I'll pan up. And here is the slight green value that I'm having a bit of an issue with. So I can simply grab my Spill Minus tool and just apply that gently again. I'll go to the Pan tool and let's undo and redo to see if that has any value. I think it does. And I'm going to do one more fine-tuning function, and that is, appropriately enough, using the tool called Tune. If I click on the Tune tool, this brings up a dialog box called the Tune Controls, and this box can be a little confusing at first. What this box allows you to do is to sample a tonal value that you want to change. I'm going to sample this very slight green down at the bottom of her chin, and then I can use any of these sliders to affect that tonal range that has been loaded into the tune controls. In this case, I want to just very slightly 
remove spill. And the tune controls are definitely a fine tuning device. Oftentimes it's almost imperceptible, uh, the change that you're making. And when you're working with any of these tune controls, you want to work with a very small range of change. So I'm dragging the remove spill slider over to the right a little bit to a 7% value and then letting it go. If I want to add back in that spill, I drag the remove spill to the left and add that back in. To get rid of the tune controls box, just click on any other button and it will disappear. So using the pan tool to look around, I am now very happy with this mask that I've created. And once again, I'm going to apply Primat, and I'll see you back in Photoshop. We are back in Photoshop a final time, and as you can see, in the more fine-tuned mask that we created with Primat has a correction to the color spill issue against our model. I hope that this tutorial and the tips and tricks that I've shown you have been helpful. So thank you for listening to this part of the tutorial.